This is ground affected. And if you want to know who I am, ask your mom. In this video, I'm going to be painting another Spider-Man. Why don't I do this for every video? He has my freaking thumbnail. This video was sponsored by CA3D Studios. And if you really want to get some of the most amazing sculpts, you want to check out their Patreon. There will be a link for them in the description below. CA3D Studios is a company that makes a bunch of sculpts every month. You get six STLs every month when you subscribe to their uh, STL tier that you get six STLs from. I don't know. It, just know that you get some amazing sculpts and honestly, they really think about the artists who are going to be making and painting these things because they put the cuts in the best of places. And for that, I must very much thank you, CA 3D Studios, because it is a gracious thing of you to do this. And I appreciate that. Now, let me just cut the waffle and let's get into how I painted Spider-Man. Before we cut the waffle, though, click like, click subscribe. Share the video with your gran, leave some words in the little square box because you have to do that for Uncle Elgi, and uh, let's do it. Since this model is 3D printed, I need to cure these parts before I can start working on them. This usually consists of me putting them into a machine that has a UV light in it, which hardens the resin. I then start working on the model and check that the fit is great. After I've got the fit working by sanding and cutting off edges, I will super glue parts that can be glued in. In this case, I glued quite a lot of this model together before I primed it. I primed this model with Citadel Black spray paint. And this is because black is the color I wanted to paint underneath everything. The reason that you need to use a primer is to help the next layers of paint adhere to the layers of paint that you're going to add later on. I then added a Zenithal, which is a white basically over the top of this model and only added that on Spidey himself. I then sprayed the reds over the top of him and allowed him to dry while I worked on the base. On the base, I needed to make it look like it was uh, smoky and rubbery, so I sprayed it with grey at first because the smoke is grey. I then used white ink to go over the fire element and I added that mostly from the top but I kind of changed the color of this to be quite light. I then used the same white to go around and add some puff to the puff balls on the base. This is a technical term that is only used in the most experienced of painters uh, areas. And this is when you make puff look more puffy. Whilst the base was drying, it was a good time to come back with a shadow and spray that onto a Spider-Man and then stop working up some highlights. I used an orange at first and I built my way up to a yellow as a highlight. If you look at any of the comics of the amazing Spider-Man, they always highlight him with yellow. I don't know why they do this. It's magic, it looks nice, I like it, and I added it. And you can see what the effect looks like on this model. Now going back to the base and the reason that I painted the base black at first, again because grey goes well over black. It's almost like that's the shadow of grey. And then also for this uh, hover thing that he is gliding upon, which is obviously stolen from a goblin looking man, he needed silver. If you just brush silver over the top, it looks magically like it's metal. Going back to the fire that's coming out of that uh, flying thing, I sprayed a see-through red over the top, or no, over the blacks first. And then I sprayed an orange and I worked my way up to the lightest colors, being really careful to keep at least some of the whites for the yellows to go over the top of. And I sprayed a clear varnish shiny over the top of that. Working on the base underneath the rubble, there is some rocks and those rocks needed to look rock color. So I then proceeded to take a couple of rock colors and spray them on that base. And me being the super hyper efficient robot that I actually am, I then decided to paint some of the OSL for the glider because I needed the light to be shining. OSL is a shortened word for object source lighting. It's a very fancy word that people like to use when they explain light coming from a source and shining on other things. For this, I used white and I used white to lay down the layers of where the greenest green would be and then I sprayed a green over the top of that. I also sprayed a little bit of blue and a little bit of red at the bottom of the glider for some ambiance. 
I then used some blue to paint the blue parts of Spider-Man's suit. This is a one and done coat, I only need to do this with a brush, meaning I don't have to mask anything off. This happens to be my technique for painting Spider-Man and I really like it this way. It's easy and quick and looks really freaking good. By the way, this blue is super thinned down. I need to buy more of this blue, but this bottle as was finished. I just put water in it and I have more paint. It's like a magic secret trick. Don't tell anybody about it. Going back to the base, it was time to dry brush it. I let this dry for a while because I needed to dry brush it and it needed to be dry when I dry brushed it. I used some washes to actually give a little bit of depth to the base and also to add a little bit more color because when you dry brush with white, it's funnily enough, you kind of take away the color. And I sprayed a couple of different colors or tones on this base just to bring some life into it and make it look dirty, like dirty ground. And then for the final layer of dry brushing on these rocks, I'm gonna use like a skin tone tan kind of color. And this is because if it's white, you're taking away color. I wanna add some color, but I also want some very light edges. After I was done dry brushing the edges, I then added black over the little pipes and uh, bits of rebar that are around the base. They're kind of scattered in a few places and this is to set up for adding the silver over them later. By doing this, what I'm doing is giving a frame to the silver. So when I add the silver on it, it's going to almost frame the edges. Now, I don't know how much you should and shouldn't leave, but I've seen the pro people do this and this is what I am doing. And before that had all dried, it was time to flip over the base and stick on a piece of paper with a little picture on it that nobody would ever see. I made a massive error here, and the error is I didn't paint it white. I've told you in previous videos, paint the base white before you put the sticker or you will have a bad time. I had a bad time. Now getting back onto the smoke, I needed to add some rubble into the smoke, and this colour is called dust. I felt like if I was going to paint the dust, in between the clouds of smoke, dust was the only color I could possibly use. I very carefully mixed this with a little bit of gray and I kind of blotched it all over the dusty bits. I then slowly worked my way up using stippling to create more dust upon the dust. I used that same dust color mixed with grays and I painted the rocks that are exploding out of the fire piece that comes around the front of the base. And then it was time to add the light to the base. You can't have an object that is a source of a light without object source lighting hitting the rest of the objects. So starting off with the fire, I used a uh, translucent orange and I used reds and I used all sorts of colors to pretty much make it look like the fire was glowing against the clouds that are coming out of the base. And once I was satisfied with that, it was time to work out where the light was going to hit coming out of the glider itself. So I placed it on the base and had a look where the light would kind of go to and I sort of painted a bit. I put the glider back on again to check and I painted a bit more. This you don't want to overdo. If you do too much here, then it's definitely going to show that you were trying to do something and it doesn't need that much. Now it was time to actually attack the source of those lights they needed to be lighter and brighter. So I mixed some of this fluorescent green with a bit of white and I painted around the source of those lights. I also then used this color to edge highlight quite a few pieces on the glider itself. This is gonna help differentiate the silhouette of the piece when you are looking at it from eye level. And for this statue, I decided to glue it together and it's not going anywhere. This is our own personal piece. I'm super glad that CA 3D Sculpts sponsored essentially this to the video because I really like Spider-Man and so for me, I'm gonna keep him in my own shelf and that's why I decided to glue him. Now let's get onto the lenses of this dude's face. I start out with the gray. You wanna go not too dark. If you go way too dark, it's gonna be too dark, but you wanna kinda go like almost off white and then slowly build your way up to white. If you keep the paint wet, you can wet blend this and get a really good looking result. As you can see, I'm doing separate layers and then kind of blending them in between with just fast motions of the brush. I then take white and I go around the edge just to give it a highlight all the way around the edge of each eye lens 
and then I'll finish that off with painting a black around the outside of the eye lens and that's pretty much the eyeballs really they're so easy honestly I like painting Spider-Man's eyes they're much easier than anyone else's eyes Now it's time to tackle that suit that is only one color of blue. I added two layers to make sure it was true and after that I used another blue. Basically this is now Dr. Seuss channel. I used light blue and I just sprayed that through my airbrush really thin on a very low pressure very carefully trying not to hit any other parts and it just built up some depth. I then painted the goblin bomb that is in the end of the th whip piece of what's that thing called? And it was time to now tackle the freaking lines. The only thing about Spider-Man is the lines. That's the only thing that really puts me off Spider-Man is doing the lines. However, I was told by a certain Matt of Matt's custom models to use a brush pen. And I went and bought myself a brush pen. And thank you, Matt. That is the best thing that I've ever done in my life. I'm super happy about it. Go buy yourself a brush pen. I don't know which one because this is the one I found in my store nearest to me. You need to find one and just use the brush pen. It's magic. It, honestly, no more dipping, no more hoping that there's going to still be paint. Just freaking brush pen magic. Also, you might want to wear a glove for this because when you're holding the model, you're probably going to be touching some of that black and it's going to go everywhere. And oh my God, that's the only thing. If you're not careful, you will get paint. And by paint, I mean ink from the new brush that you got all over the place. And you're going to be sad at one point. So it's probably a good idea to seal this in with a clear coat before you start. That way you can wash, at least to some extent, some of the mistakes off. Don't say I didn't warn you. It is very possible that you're going to make mistakes. I made at least seven. When I was done with the lines and the suit, it was time for me to paint that lovely emblem on his back, which is a nice bright red. I then added some of that uh, OSL to the underside of him and that's where I called this model done. Hopefully you've taken something in this video that will help you paint your own Spider-Man in the future. And maybe you're not painting Spider-Man and you're painting something different. Maybe this will help you. I hope that I inspire many people to make many different things because I like many things myself. Of course, this would not be possible if it weren't for my Patreons. And I'd like to say a super special thank you to my Patreons right now. And uh, there was a couple new Patreons I'd like to thank on top of that. Mark Pride and Cloudy Fep. Cloudy FEP. Well, however you say it, thank you my dudes. It's because of you guys that I'm able to keep that light blinding my eyeballs and uh, continue making videos like this. Now we are at the best part of the video. This is when I get to tell you how I feel about things. And the way I feel is, if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, then kindly just f off. Now I've got a hover tank to make, so if you would please excuse me while I go and make this thing. Oh, you thought I was just gonna be quiet about Rastlin standing in the back corner here. Yes, uh, next time.